Welcome back to a vlog. That's right, this week's video is going to be a vlog. Uh, we haven't done one in some time. It's been, it's been a while. Um, I'm, I'm gonna attempt to explain that. But first, can we quickly talk about the elephant in the room? A la moustache. That's right, I've embraced the moustache. Hannah absolutely hates it. She's making me leave the lights off until I shave it off. <sighs> we're coming to you from the kitchen floor because that's just where we're playing right now. Washing machine's on as well, so Steph's gonna hate that. But yeah, feels like we haven't I vlogged. Can't say hey. I can't say hate. Is that a bad word, is it? Okay, I won't say hate anymore. I love it. Um, but I'm in the minority. Most people don't like it. I really love it. I've actually, I've actually got a visual metaphor that will help explain why I love it. For my visual metaphor, I'll be using this. This is a long jump. The purpose of the long jump is to propel your body as far as you can in a forward motion. Watch our demo. That's about as far as I can get, unless I approach it differently. What if instead of just leaping forwards, I was to take a couple of steps backwards first. Now you may be busy fixating on the fact that I'm moving backwards when the sole purpose here should be jumping forwards, but that's where you're mistaken. I'm only moving backwards, so... <laughs> twice as far. The mistake people make is seeing the moustache as the two steps backwards, when in fact, the moustache is the leap forwards. So what else is new? Um, I've, we've obviously been doing a podcast. We've been working on that. We're both writing um, stuff for some separate projects. Uh, I've been working on some directing and producing for sort of some commercial work. Uh, we've been doing lots of Instagram stuff. We haven't been making vlogs. And I, 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 there's a reason for that. It's, a, it's not a comfortable thing to talk about. It's a difficult thing to talk about. But I figured like a lot of you guys have been with us from the start. You're veterans. You deserve to know the truth and deserve to know why we've kind of not, not been filming as much. Um, um, so I'll attempt to explain that. I thought I'd do a little puppy update. So Pip is 12 weeks now. And she's so funny because she looks so cute. And everywhere we go, people are like, oh my God, that's the cutest dog. But she's such a terror. Like she's so feisty. She's so bossy with George. Like she'll literally shove him out of his food bowl when he's eating his food and eat his food. She's chewed the side of our dishwasher. She's just like not the chilled out puppy that George was. She's a lot of fun. She's so playful. Yeah. Oh, I'll show you in a minute when the dishwasher's finished. It all started in around the middle of 2019. We noticed suddenly a drop off in, in sponsorships on the channel. It just seemed to like, they just seemed to stop coming in. Um, and how these videos are sustainable is when we get a sponsor. So if one a month comes in, that's fine. If one every other month comes in, that's fine. But providing they come in, then we can keep doing it. Uh, but what happened is we went a month and nothing came in, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months, seven months, about eight or nine months went past where we just weren't getting any work coming in, like nothing, nada. We were just what, hoping and wondering when it was gonna come in. We were getting work through other platforms like Instagram, uh, but nothing was coming in for this channel so we were like we started to panic we're thinking shit how can we keep doing this especially because it's such a, a tax on my time like i'm up at the edit and working on writing and editing these vlogs and it takes so much of my time and my resor resources that i'm i'm less present as a dad i'm less present helping out um, hannah with her stuff and essentially it just looks like i'm working on vanity projects because if nothing's coming in and i'm working on these videos all the time then it's kind of like why am i why, why am i doing this i love doing it and but at the same time we we've got we've got to put our mortgage first like paying our bills and our uh, and, and our you know our mortgage comes before everything else that that's we need to make sure that's covered before we can work on these vanity projects so then it became like quite a difficult thing to manage because uh, we were like well what, what do we do if people are working with us more on instagram maybe we should m migrate over there and cultivate that people are interested more in long-form content and podcasts maybe we should focus on that uh we've just been like kind of a bit lost trying to figure out some some other way to keep this going Rufus, tell everyone what happened to your hair. Grayson cut my hair. Yeah, Grayson cut your hair, didn't he? Yeah. And whose hair did you cut? I didn't cut any. Oh, I thought you cut Grayson's hair. I didn't. Yeah. A lot of it is my fault uh, because I've always set out, like we've never 
I think we've, ever, we've never done collaborations. We've never done a lot of the things that they tell you to do in YouTube to kind of build your channel and to get popular. Neither of us have wanted to be popular. It's not something we, we crave or want. But at the same time, like we exist in a, in, a, in a world where what they predominantly care about is numbers and metrics and, and how many people are watching you. So when you've got this kind of like cavalier attitude to like numbers and metrics and pop, uh, being popular, that can be very detrimental to, to you as a, as a creator. What's on your trouser? Is it a little hole? Yeah. Oh. And what, what did we do this morning together? Uh, I don't know. What did, how long did you walk for? Uh, I don't know. You walked for 5K. Yeah, 5K. <laughs> the black eyed peas and fucking people jumping into different outfits on TikTok is popular. I hate shit that's popular. It's because I'm trying to be so edgy and cool and, and down and underground that I just don't want to be popular. I feel sometimes like I'm just, I, I, I'm, the, I'm the channel's biggest problem. I'm like destroying it from the inside. I feel that way sometimes. Like I, I, I'm just, I build this thing which I love and then I slowly destroy it. I don't know why. Maybe if I wasn't such a dick about it, we could make it more sustainable and if I did all the things that YouTube tell us to do and if we were more like this or more like that and but it just feels like we're, if we're less like ourselves if we're less like who we really are then that would work far better for us if we put on this kind of mask and this facade and um, say and do things that I don't know aren't really us then it would be more beneficial but then I don't want to do that I, I just can't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So yeah, anyway, I've got a moustache. I'm destroying the channel from the inside out. Uh, welcome back to the vlog. <laughs> oh. Okay. A cup of tea. So now you know the real reason we've had to stop vlogging. Let's, uh, let's move on and, and get you up to speed with everything. We got a new puppy. Here she is, uh, she's called Pippi. Don't let her looks deceive you. I think she has more in common genetically with a gremlin than she does a dog. She bites us and bullies everyone and she's already claimed the alpha spot of the house. I just let her have it, to be honest. Grayson's into making Play-Doh faces right now. He, he takes them outside after school and tries to sell them for 50p each. He hasn't sold any yet, but uh, a man keeps driving past in a, in a van and he looks really interested, so we'll wait and see. Rufus and Grayson decided to cut their hair a couple of nights ago. That's why they look like they're from the Midlands. Hang on a minute, we don't look like that. Uh, yes, you do. You've all got shit haircuts. George is the easiest member of the family, uh, apart from his incessant barking at the Amazon delivery man. But uh, yeah, all he wants is cuddles. And he hasn't done a shit on, in the house for a few months now, so that means we're best friends. We all have a new morning routine, where we walk about 2K to drop off Grayson at school each morning. The dogs come along too and we normally play shooting games along the way. I feel it's good to get your kids interested in firearms nice and early. As I'm filming this, we're still in the second COVID lockdown, but this one is far better because they kept the schools open. Thank Christ. Hannah and I both quit booze until Christmas. We started watching The Crown on Netflix with the peppermint tea. Rock and roll. And life feels relatively normal around here. The trees are, are mostly bare now and it's been raining a lot, so it's very wet and muddy. Are you, do you care? Do you care about the weather conditions? I've not been vlogging for a while, so I feel like I might be boring you with my weather condition chat. If I am, let me know. I've got other shit I can talk about. Although it might not be any more riveting, I'm afraid. We're all quietly looking forward to this year being over, if I'm honest. The new year is only a few weeks away now and it, it always brings a sense of closure and optimism. So we're holding tight for that. But yeah, that's really it. That's what we've been up to, and that's what we've been doing most days. On with the show. I have a new gadget I want to show you. These are my new Technic 1210s. Hannah got them for me for my 40th birthday. And, and before we go any further, no, the obvious tragedy of a 40-year-old man rekindling his love for vinyl DJing is not lost on me, Karen. Yeah, anyway, I had some of these when I was uh, in my early 20s, but I had to sell them because I couldn't afford to pay my rent. So it's amazing to have them back. I first started 
learning how to mix about 23 years ago when I was 17. This is me at my friend Ryan's house playing his turntables, learning how to mix. About two weeks before this video was taken, I had hair past my shoulders, I had like leather jacket on, leather trousers, a carcass t-shirt, my nails were painted black. I was in a death metal band called Seventh Morning. I was a completely different person. And then one day I went over to Ryan's house and he put on a record for me and it completely changed my whole life. It changed everything. And, and the song he played was this song you're listening to now, Grease 2003 Drives. And I know now it sounds a little bit dated, but at the time it really resonated with me. It, it, it connected to something within me that, that all the metal didn't. It, it, the, the heavy metal, I suppose, channeled all the angst and the rage that I had as a kind of a teenager. And what this trance song did was it channeled something else, completely different energy that I got from it. Uh, so two weeks later, my hair was all cut off and I was wearing double denim from Top Man and uh, yeah, I was going to clubs and uh, I got myself some turntables and I started learning myself. I'm hoping the rain stops so I can take the dogs out because look, they do this thing in the morning where they both just find a spot in the kitchen and stare at me. <laughs> they literally just stare at me. <laughs> I don't know what they want. They're waiting for me to sit down so that they can get on my lap. Um, but yeah, they're like, they literally make me so incredibly happy. They bring me so much joy every single day. They are just so loyal and so happy to see me all the time and so cuddly and they're always just by my side and I just bloody love them. But here's the thing, it wasn't just the mixing of the records that I fell so in love with, it was a whole process a whole romantic process that you would go through each week when you would get up in the morning, have your breakfast, walk to your local record shop, you'd pick out a big pile of records and 90% of the records you played, they, would, they wouldn't provoke any reaction, they wouldn't do anything for you, they wouldn't spark any joy as Marie, Marie Kondo would say, they would just, they would do nothing. But every now and again you'd find a record which would just make all the hairs on your arm stand up and it would just blow you away. It was like almost like hunting in a, in a, in a field of mud to find that golden coin and every now and again you'd find it. buy that record, you'd take it home, you'd mix it with all your other records, and then the final thing would be letting somebody else listen to it, and that joy that you would get just from seeing somebody else being like, wow, this is amazing. So that's what I fell in love with, the process, the whole process. Now what happened over the years is that CDJs came in, so people were DJing more on CDs and less on vinyl. And so because of that, there was less demand for vinyl, and there being less demand for vinyl meant the prices of the records went higher and higher and higher until like purists like me who wanted to keep DJing on vinyl got priced out of the market, and all the little independent record shops one by one just folded. I've got four hours from now until I need to pick Rufus up, and then Rue and I are going on a little um, socially distanced park play date this afternoon, hopefully if it stops raining. I don't mind the cold um, at all, but rain is just, oh, it's just a bit um, relentless, isn't it? I don't mind going out in it for a little bit. When it's like cold sideways rain, it's not the one, especially when you've got a toddler or you're trying to do something in a playground. I don't, I don't mind putting wellies on and getting wet. It's just when it's like cold wet. Um, so hopefully it clears up. Oh look, here she is, here she comes. <laughs> come to stare at me, have you? For me, I could never get into CDJing. I just felt it was too, I was too removed from the, from the music. In a way, when you when you play vinyl records and you're, you're very tactile with the, with the music and you touch the records and you feel things, it just, it, just, it just feels different. There's more of a, like a clinical experience when you DJ with CDs. It doesn't feel quite the same. There's something pure and, uh, and reductive about vinyl. I, it's hard to describe unless you're into vinyl. I know I sound like a cock, but it's just something about it. On my to-do list today, I've got a, a brief that I need to um, kind of reply to with a couple of ideas and a couple of products that I want to use from the company, which is one that I'm really, actually very excited about because I've loved the company for a really long time. It's Sophie Allport. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of her brand before, um, but I love the prints and I love all of the Christmas things that have come in. So I'm quite excited to flesh that one out. What else is on my list? There's some really boring stuff on my list. <laughs> really boring like 
grown up shit that you have to do when when you're an adult that you're just like oh no one told me this was gonna, <laughs> this was gonna be part of my life all the time when hannah bought me these i was i was a little bit worried so i was thinking well that whole process isn't there anymore most of the record shops don't exist. How do I buy vinyl? Where do I find vinyl these days? And it, the whole process that I loved isn't there anymore. And, and even if it was there, I, I don't have the time to go to a record shop on a Saturday morning and flick through tons of records trying to find that golden nugget. I've got dog shit to pick up in the garden and a car to MOT. I just don't have the time as a dad to do that. So I was worried about it. I was like, well, how do I fit this in now? How does this work? And then I discovered the best thing ever, this thing. What this little box does is essentially let me map any song that I want to vinyl records. So I've mapped a song to this record right now. It's the song that Tom Rosenhall and I wrote about Amazon sending me a box of Capra Sun, Black Current Capra Sun, instead of my Xbox One Limited Edition Scorpio, which I still haven't forgotten or forgiven them for. But anyway, yeah, look. What am I gonna do? do, 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 do with these black current ones? What am I gonna do? do, do, do? So all the songs that I've been finding over the years and just collecting, I can just map them to my records and still get that vinyl experience. And it's just brought back so many memories and it just invokes so many emotions in me when I'm doing it. And I just love the process so much. I adore the process of just mixing two records together, finding some amazing song, dropping it at the perfect time. It's something that really connects with me. I don't know what it is about it. It's just, there's a process to it, which just, I really connect to and I really adore. And I just, I almost go into this kind of like flow state with it. And, and it just, it just feels really zen. What I'm planning to do is doing some live streaming sessions. I might call them like midlife crisis sessions. Let's not beat around the bush. That's pretty much what they are. Uh, uh, yeah, so midlife crisis sessions with Spinback Michalak. That's not my DJ name, by the way. That was a joke. I'm not called Spinback Michalak. I'm looking forward to getting better again. I'm okay right now, but I want to be good. And then once I'm good, I'll let you know when I do my live streaming. But yeah, these are my new, my new toys. Anyway, I'm going to go and read my book for 10 minutes just before the day gets started because I think it's such a nice way to engage your brain but also at the same time it's a very nice way of relaxing and it's for me it's like a complete form of like I want to say meditation but I know I sound like a dick it just helps me relax and if I'm feeling in any way stressed I just find that it's very therapeutic and it transports you to another land He's here, he's come to claim his spot already. He's like, nope, she's mine. She's mine. <laughs> so I've got my, oh, I forgot my pen. Don't you hate that when you sit down and you just, oh, here's the other one. <laughs> Don't you hate that when you sit down and you get comfy and then you're like, oh, I forgot something. I have to go and get my pen. Anyway, I'm reading The End of the World Running Club, which is a bit of a dystopian type novel not something I'd normally go for but it was in has been in my Amazon wishlist basket for ages and I think it was on my Kindle um, as a sample and I tried it one night and I liked the sample it's okay um, I'd probably give it like a six or a seven out of ten I quite like it for right now in lockdown if that makes sense and I don't normally go for books that have been written from a male's perspective, no, I don't know why, it must be some kind of like unconscious choice, but I find that I just relate more to a female protagonist. Um, and this one has a male protagonist, um, which is still very good, but not the kind of voice that I'm used to relating to, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling now, drink my coffee, get my pen, start my day. <laughs> Look at this little rat girl. Hi girl, come on in. You come and sit up here with me.
You are such a needy little thing, aren't you? I think she's slowly growing on me, the little gremlin. All she wants to do is bite. She's got such a little bite on her as well. She needs to understand that she's not the alpha. Oh, lick me in the mouth, that's gross. I want to get one more dash end, um, and it's a long haired shaded red. It looks like this. I think if I had that, then that would complete my life. Then I'd have everything I could ever want and need. Oh, somebody's at the door. Yes, baby. This is a new piece of art which we're gonna put there. Um, it is from Bag and Bones who make awesome LED art. They made our M logo for us. This piece of LED art in particular has been trending on one feed for like, got like a month. Nice touch, they give you free Haribo. About there. Just gotta plug it in now. Boom! Yeah, babes! Look at that, isn't that cool? Do you like our new sign, Rupee? What does that say? Don't be icky. Don't be icky. <laughs> Do you like those sweeties? Thank you for bringing me these. That's okay. Hey, G Man, Do you like the sign? It says, Don't be a Mick. No, it should be a nut. No, that's Mick. You can write No, it says, Don't be a duck. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say that. It says Mick, but this is a silent M. No, that's a duck. No, 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 it looks like that, but D and an I together is a silent M. No, it's not. 